our discussion on backtrader strategy component, specifically the order methods. Now before I start, if you like my content, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel, please. To start, if you aren't familiar with the order types in any trading infrastructure, we mainly have three main types. The market order, which is an aggressive order, or in other words, execute the whatever price liquidity you might find. You may find. Limit order, which means when the price reaches a specific level and there is a willing buyer or seller, please execute my order. A stop order, which is a market order to be executed when the price reaches a certain level. Note that limit orders can protect you from slippage that may happen whenever when trading with market orders. Think of it as a guaranteed price. Although to be specific, or to be specific, uh, later on we're gonna understand that it's not a guaranteed order when we reach the high frequency trading series. The best way to visualize the order types is the TPSL scenario. Suppose that we want to buy Bitcoin at a certain price with a market order and set out set out the, our take profits and stop losses. Since the take profit uh, is above the current price and it's a sell order, then it's going to be a limit sell order. And since the stop loss is a sell order as well, but below the current price, then it's going to be a stop sell order. Well, to execute any order on any trading infrastructure, we're going to have to answer these questions, or at least in our trading logic. First, we need to know if it's a long or a short buy or sell, or maybe we're closing some, some uh, uh, we're closing a trade. Uh, on which pair, or in back trader logic, which datas? Uh, sub, what what is the our trade size? Are we going to buy with one lot or 0.1 lot, for example? The type of order, whether it was a limit or a market order, or a stop, it could be a stop order. And if it was a limit, at what price? Uh, is there any time validity to this limit order? And do we want to, uh, to to include a trade tag or a trade ID to this order? Uh, according to the back trader order format, for example, if we have a condition that it is true, for example, that the SMA is above the uh, the fast SMA, we need to issue an order. The order should be like more like self dot buy. We need to include the execution type. By default, it's a market order, so we can uh, we can omit this uh, this one. The price to buy at if the if you uh, the price to buy at if we were using a market order uh, if we were using a limit order, but basically the demo, the default can be the next candle open. So technically, we can omit this uh, the, the, the this property as well. The validity is or which is the the order validity or the date time object. By default, it's indefinite. So technically, we can omit this one as well. You can simply say self to buy. That's it. Time to code. To start, I imported the libraries that we're gonna need for this uh, for this strategy. The first strategy will be the momentum strategy. Uh, so basically, let's call it this way: momentum. The momentum strategy simply says if let's say if the close of the previous bar or or basically if the close of the second bar previous second bar is above the close of the previous bar then we expect that there is a high momentum so technically you should buy and if the close and vice versa the, the inverse is actually of the close of the second last bar is slower sorry is lower than the close close of the previous bar, then we should sell. Right, so basically let's define our strategy, momentum, which inherits the strategy from backtrader. Let's initialize the strategy, definite, self, uh, self dot data close, is equal to self dot datas dot close and actually let's yeah that's it define next which inherits or use takes the self so basically our strategy logic is pretty simple if self dot data close from the previous second one is higher than the self dot data close of the previous candle 
then self.order is going to be self.py sorry from the by we can actually we can use the either a limit order or a market order or a stop order or with their properties but since it's a market order only the simplest form uh, we can keep it as uh, as default self.by and if self dot data close of the minus two so basically it's the else we can keep it as else since it's gonna be either one way or the other way else self dot order equals self dot sell actually no it's the else it's it's no the, the self we might have some sort of uh, sell orders that can be executed as a short whenever we have regardless of whatever position we had self dot data close two is less than self dot data close of minus one sorry then self dot sell all right else if the, we have any other condition other than that self dot order equals self dot close which closes every order or every position we have um, bt, oh sorry, cerebro is equal to bt dot cerebro. We instantiated cerebro as usual. Now let's actually add some pr a printing function. Print by executed. Let's add an f string so we can add the price by executed at uh, this price and this the current price is self dot data close the current one let's copy this one because we're gonna need it in the cell and the close cell executed closing Cerebro dot add strategy to add the strategy to Cerebro, which is momentum and since we don't have any data let's basically let's add the Yahoo Finance data Y Finance as YF what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Tesla as usual to download the Tesla stocks data YF dot download the ticker name is TSLA uh, give me everything on a daily basis uh, TSLA underscore BT is equal to BT dot feeds sorry dot pandas data and our pandas data will be Tesla the data frame Sorry, forgot the data name. Sorry, sorry about that error. Uh, Tesla BT. Now we need to add the data to Cerebro. Just Tesla underscore BT. Basically, we had we got the data and we got the strategy into. So we loaded that strategy and the data to Cerebro. What's left is actually to run the strategy. We should see some printed functions right now. All right, as you can see, by executed, closing, by executed, closing, by executed, closing. Sell, 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 blah, 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 and that's it. Okay, that's gonna be a long one since we have a lot of data to test on. Uh, that's the first strategy, basically. Later on, we're gonna learn how to visualize the strategy, how it works. We're gonna learn that we have some errors over here because we sold several times. How can we solve this issue? Or what if we bought several times? We're gonna take we're gonna uh, take out every every dollar we have at our broker's account in order to buy, or as, uh, because due to this error, we're gonna try to fix it in the second strategy. So basically, let us build the hourly uh, hourly bias strategy on euro dollar. To do so, I'm gonna load the data 
from a separate CSV file that I have for the hourly data of euro dollar. I think it's hourly euro hourly. Parse dates equal to true. Index column is equal to timestamp. There uh, we have the data loaded. And the timestamp has been indexed or has been indexed into date time objects. Um, the data frame itself. Let's see the uh, let's see the hourly bias over the, on the price uh, of the price, the hourly returns. First of all, we're gonna need we're gonna need to create the returns the column, which is mp.log or basically the log returns of this of the price mp.log, which is df dot price divided by df dot price dot shift one. So basically, it's taking this price, dividing dividing it by the previous one, and uh, logging the entire function. As you can see, we got the log returns of each price change of each hour. Let us try. Give me the return section, grouped by grouped by the df dot index dot hour. So I'm taking every hour. Or basically, I'm grouping by by the hour uh, and checking its mean. Let's plot it in a bar. Sorry, find equal bar, and voila. As you can notice, there is an hourly bias actually between nine and twelve. So basically, we should sell at nine, close at the end of twelve. To do so, we're gonna introduce our hourly bias strategy. dot strategy um, basically it's we're gonna do the same thing initialize that takes the self um, self sorry dot data close is equal to self dot datas of this current data dot close um, we're gonna add Oh, basically, let's see it this way for now. Define next takes the self as well. So basically, since we're gonna be selling at nine and buying at thirteen, so what we should do is that if self dot datas dot date time date time give me the date time of this data at the current bar dot hour is equal equal to nine do this but basically since we know that there is whenever with it, whenever it's at nine it's gonna submit a sell order so and whenever it's at 12 or 13 it's gonna submit a sell order uh, a buy order to close the previous one so basically what is going to be done in here is self dot order is equal to self dot sell, and this one is going to be a market order without with. No, no, with no, it's going to be a market order without any any advanced properties, basically. And if self dot datas zero dot date time dot date time, give me the date time object dot hour is equal equal to um, twelve. What shall we do? self dot order is equal to self dot buy and let's add a printing function as well so we can see what's going to ha what's happening oh sorry f string selling at um self dot datas oh sorry sort of the data close at this price Let's copy and paste this one because we're gonna need it. Buying at sell the data close zero. Let's add the data. Oh, I think let's add the data frame data. Um, data which is equal to bt dot feeds dot pandas data. Our data name is equal to df. 
since we don't have any OHLC, we're going to use the open equal to zero. High is equal to zero. Low is equal to zero. And close is going to be equal to zero as well. Now, since we don't have volume, we're going to specify it as minus one or none, basically. We can use either ways. Uh, none means nothing, minus one means search for it, basically. I'm not going to do it. Open interest is equal to minus one as well. Now, let's instantiate Cerebro. Sorry, called bt dot Cerebro. Now, Cerebro, let's add the data. Add data. And our data is called data. Cerebro dot add strategy as we learned in the previous example. Hourly strat hourly bias strategy. Here we go. Now to run the strategy, we need to do cerebro dot run. And here we go. Selling, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, and so on. Blah 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 blah. I'm gonna do a more like an advanced one in here, but lib widget. We're gonna learn this section later on, so don't, don't worry about this one. Cerebro.plot. I'm trying to show you how we visualize. I plot equal false. Since we don't have volume, I'm gonna specify volume as false as well. And there, we have several positive and negative trades. We can improve the strategy at later on, but since, bear in mind that since the Trade size is actually the current or one or one stake basically as we call it. So it's buying one euro at a time. So the profit will be like 0, 0.00 something. It's not going to be something. It's not going to be uh, visible basically. And that's it. Thank you for watching.